Welcome, folks. Uh, welcome to our solution spotlight with Chris Mariello of eMoney. Um, see, folks are coming in. I'm going to give us just a couple of minutes here to let everyone get in, get settled, and then we will kick off. Chris, while we're waiting, who's going to win the Super Bowl this year? I don't know. I, could be the Niners. If the Niners face anybody other than the Ravens, it's probably going to be them. I think they're going to the from the NFC. If the Ravens make it all the way, I think they beat the Niners. Okay. Rematch of the the Flacco was at 05 Super Bowl. So okay. I think if they make it, they win. Nice. Yeah, I was saying before we launched, I'm not really following, except CJ Stroud is putting on quite a show right now, and he's a Buckeye, so I gotta, I gotta be excited about that. I think he was the youngest quarterback yet to win a playoff game. Wow. Yeah. Awesome. Just kills me that we couldn't have closed it out in his senior year, but yeah, he took us pretty far. All right, we're a couple minutes in. Let's go ahead and kick off. So I'm Dave Bowman, Director of Partnerships here at XY Planning Network. We've got Chris Mariello from eMoney, uh, who's going to be presenting today. Uh, just a few notes on the top here. Uh, let's see, I've got a couple housekeeping items. Um, so as we get into the presentation, if you could put all of your questions in the Q&A as opposed to the chat, that'll just help us keep things organized. I really appreciate that. Um, a bit about XYPN, uh, you probably all know who we are, but XYPN is really the home for building your, um, your practice uh, with your own autonomy. So we help you launch, run, and or scale your financial planning firm. We do that through a support network. We've been around 10 years now, so we've helped um, really thousands of advisors launch and run their own practices uh, completely autonomously, but with our support. So we provide technology support. E-Money is one of those technology partners uh, that we subsidize pretty heavily uh, to make uh, it available to you at a, at a pretty extreme discount. We also have a core tech stack of, of uh, technologies that we think that you need to run your practice that are included uh, in XY Planning membership um, and a number of resources like that. Other partnerships on education, free access to kids.com, uh, various insight information, NAPFA, things like that. Um, we also offer a lot of educational resources. There's an academy of really how to uh, run and grow your practice um, at whatever stage you are. We try to meet you where, where you are and provide a lot of uh, specialized education and support in all those areas. And then things like access to coaching, uh, access to mastermind groups, uh, a really vibrant community of advisors who are doing basically the same thing that you are in or have been there before. Uh, to help you out. Uh, in addition to our service lines, so we have a, uh, a TAMP, uh, XYPN Invest, um, operations support, uh, compliance support, all of these things. It's really just an environment where you can grow and thrive as a, as a financial advisor. So that's us. Uh, Chris Mariella was the financial planning practice management consultant uh, at eMoney. Uh, he's been helping eMoney clients for nearly 10 years, starting as a customer service rep, Chris's passion for helping advisors implement and use eMoney led him to become a client success coach uh, and then a member of the, line, the live training team. Uh, and ultimately in his current position uh, where he helps firms and advisors implement and scale their planning services to deliver more personal impactful advice. So I think everyone's familiar with eMoney, really, really powerful tool. Again, it's part of our uh, partnership tech stack, but Chris is gonna dive in on some awesome tax strategies. Uh, today for uh, you know tax planning. So Chris, I'm going to hand it over to you. All right. Thank you, David. So hello and welcome to today's session, Delivering Tax Smart Strategies with your money. With clients needing to squeeze every last dime out of their financial resources, strategies that minimize taxes are coming to the forefront of many conversations. Kudos to each of you for taking a few minutes to sharpen and hone your planning skills.
All right, so the shift toward advice is growing and the role that wealth management plays for different segments of clients continues to evolve. Over the last decade in particular, the responsibilities of financial advisors have been fast expanding. Advisors are not only investment and portfolio managers, they're financial coaches, healthcare and Medicare ex experts, tax planning professionals, and philanthropic advisors. The list is long and only growing. So while financial advisors that were primarily focused on portfolio management in the past try to move away from a product or transactions-based relationship to a more service-focused approach, they need to take on the role of being holistic financial planners. They need to be able to examine the client's entire financial life and household. In an ideal situation, the financial advisor will strive to be that trusted resource and that serves as a center point for their client's current needs and future life aspirations. For financial advisors, becoming more advice and planning oriented is especially important when it comes to the biggest of goals, retirement planning. So the core services that financial advisors provide their clients involve investment management, personal finance, estate planning, and wealth transfer. Now, they also must stay on top of client needs. So at the same time, investors are increasingly seeking non-traditional support, such as elder care, social security related advice, and tax management. So retirement planning is multi-layered, involving a number of levers and one where clients can benefit from the experience and knowledge that comes from a trusted advisor. It is about taking a long-term view, addressing different life stages and expectations from the very start. For some clients, it may mean keeping their spending in check with an eye towards cash flow. For others, it may mean reducing or managing risk. And then there's taxes. Let's not forget taxes. So this is particularly important during the decumulation part of retirement planning. Advisors need to move beyond just accumulation planning and look to effective income planning. And to do that well, you need to take taxes into account. It's not always about building the biggest nest egg, it's about producing the greatest amount of income with the least amount of risk after taxes and fees. So for many, Social Security is still a significant part of their retirement income. Understanding its nuances, especially when you weave in wealth care or health care planning, can help clients make dramatically better decisions. Lastly, there's change. Plans still need to be flexible as markets, legislation, and quite frankly, life can cause change. So plans can't be cast into stone as clients are impacted from all sides. So I am Chris Moriello, and I'm a financial planning practice manager at Salt and Eddie Money. It is my pleasure to be your host for this Delivering Tax Smart Strategies with eMoney webinar. So we're actually going to cover a lot of ground today. We'll begin by discussing the importance of taking taxes into account as you're developing plans and how that can help improve client outcomes. We'll then walk through three easy to implement tax smart strategies using eMoney. I'll then roll up my sleeves and walk you through how to implement each of those strategies within the platform. We'll also review what we shared and leave you with the 10% you need to remember. And lastly, if there are any questions, we'll take some time at the end, slash we'll see if we have time room to get some questions during, which David will you know, throw my way. All right. So let's begin with the importance of taking taxes into account as you're having holistic planning-led conversations with your clients. So as investors approach and are in retirement, several concerns are top of mind. When asking retirees in those age 45 and older, some common themes emerged. First, concerns around health and healthcare were front and center. But closely on their heels were concerns that, cli or were concerns that clients had that on the surface, they may have little control over, such as market volatility, the economy, inflation, and taxes. Now, while these may seem like impacts that investors have little control over, something like the topic of taxes can definitely be impacted by the decisions we make. So as a result, investors can either take a defensive or an offensive stance. The volatility and uncertainty of recent years have reinforced the defensive focus of client goals. Investors' three leading goals are now protecting against inflation, strengthening investment returns, and ensuring financial security. And while investors have become more defensive, it has also encouraged them to go on the offensive and take action and influence areas where they may have some amount of control, 
such as seeking greater diversification, strategies to generate higher returns, and reducing their tax bill. Those last two, higher returns and lower taxes, can be stitched together. So by applying tax strategies to planning and making tax-centric decisions when it comes to planning, it has been estimated that the average investor would add about 1% to 2% to their investment returns on an annual basis. This additional return on their investments is often called tax alpha. So in investments, the, con or the concept of alpha refers to that extra bit of performance that a manager can generate through skill on top of ordinary market returns. Tax alpha, on the other hand, is the outperformance that an investor can achieve by taking advantage of all the available tax saving strategies. Obviously, the bigger the tax liability, the more tax savings can be realized. Don't confuse tax alpha with tax efficiency as it goes much deeper than just that. It's about looking at all your financial moves through the lens of reducing taxes that can in turn help you maximize after tax returns. It includes items such as buying a house or investing, contributing to a Roth or a traditional retirement plan, reviewing your state income tax bill, as well as how you're helping your local community and how you leave a legacy. So let's take a look at three simple strategies that can help clients make better choices when it comes to taxes and how they can have a positive impact on their financial security. So we're gonna cover three hot topics when it comes to taxes. Roth conversions are part of conversations for many advisors as clients wonder if they should pay taxes now or wait and pay taxes later when spending withdrawals or RMDs are made. In a similar vein, retirement, uh, more and more employers are adding Roth options to employer-sponsored retirement plans. And that leaves clients wondering, should I take my tax deduction now? Or like the Roth, Roth conversion question, pay taxes today. And while some of your clients may have significant assets to look at more extensive charitable trusts to give to their non favorite nonprofits, those of all means can benefit from a conversation around smart ways to benefit their favorite groups. So not long ago, we introduced a Roth conversion technique. While you've always been able to convert an IRA in a lump sum over a period of years or by entering a custom schedule, the newest technique allows a strategy that many advisors are promoting, filling up a given tax bracket over a period of time to reduce the tax man's bite. Many clients may not be able to make contributions uh, to Roth or make Roth IRA contributions, but they may be offered the opportunity to contribute to a Roth 401k at work. And now, even have employer matching contributions made in an after-tax manner. But that is that the right choice for their unique situations. Now, you can assess and answer that, a question, and answer that question in a holistic manner by modeling that in the eMoney Decision Center. And donors big and small are taking advantage of qualified charitable distributions. Next Level Advisors recognize that while RMD ages have gone up, QCDs have not. Currently, individuals who are age 70 and a half and older may have transfers made from their IRAs directly to qualified charitable organizations up to $100,000, with index being available starting in 2024. If you're married, your spouse can also transfer $100,000. We'll show how utilizing this technique can leverage, and leverage even everyday giving, reducing income taxes, and stretch clients' charitable dollars further. So without further ado, let's actually roll up our sleeves and get into eMoney and begin demonstrating how to implement tax strategies for your clients. All right, so today we're gonna to be using our client John and Jane tax strategy. So you know they've done a good job of saving. They've got a decent amount in investments here. So we're gonna actually do some work and see how we can manage their plan. Now, John is a successful sales executive and Jane is working you know, as an accountant for a nonprofit. So if we go and we look at here, we see that you know they're, they're ready to go. They're looking to retire at 60. And they've got a couple more educations to go. So here we've got our plan fully baked out. We've worked in their financial priorities and their goals, college education for their two kids here. We've got their net worth totally built out. 
Here we can actually see that they do have a health savings account that we're going to take a look at and see how we can be a little smart with what we're saving into that and how we can take advantage of some triple tax savings there. And looking at our income, we see that we're making a decent amount and in Social Security, we're going to have a decent number there. So how can we take advantage of some of these things? So let's actually look directly into the plans area and we'll talk about some of the strategies that we're going to use here. So in this plan section, I've just created what we're going to call the Tax Smart Strategies Plan. I'm going to open that with the advanced planning. We're going to take a look at how this works. So here in this, you can see that we've got four or five different things that we want to do. So the first one is we want to create that Roth conversion to fill up, and we're going to look at filling up to that 24% tax bracket. Now to create this transfer flow, I came into this add a new, came down to the transfer, and then we're going to use this special Roth conversion type. Now here in this Roth conversion type, there's a couple of things that we need to define. So first we want to know, you know, what's the destination account? When we set that destination account, it then lets us know what accounts are available to convert. So we say that we want to start this when John is, we're going to say at John's retirement at age 60. And then, you know, just by guessing and checking a couple of times, and I'll show you the tax strategy or the bracket that we might look at, the, the report that we might look at to figure out how long we want to convert this, we were able to find that about eight years was the strategy that we wanted to go with. Now, if you don't have a Roth IRA already accounted for in the platform, you actually can just write with this technique, add a brand new Roth IRA so that you can convert into that and fill it up. And then we get into the conversion type. So we want to say, all right, what are we doing here? Are we doing a fixed amount? We know exactly how much we want over those eight years. Are we doing the full account value over that? Are we going to deplete it over time? Or are we going to use this fill up the tax bracket? So if you notice that in here, we've got our different tax brackets, starting all the way at the bottom, then going all the way up, accounting for the change in the brackets, you know, when that TCNJ does, you know, sunset here. So we've got our 24 to 28% bracket that we're going to fill. If you do have any questions, we do have this nice. So here you can see that that's why you're seeing that different and we're showing you exactly what the brackets are. Now, the last thing that we did have to set was we did have to go in here and say accounts to convert. We would just select this and we would say, yes, that it's John's 401k. We pop that up there and now we'd see exactly what's going on. So let's actually go in and let's go back to the decision center and see what this could look like. So I'm going to open up the decision center without opening up the tax smart strategies and just look at their plan as it currently lies. So the first thing that we do is we just look at and, you know, really, I might have any conversation. So with these guys, maybe we've already done some planning before and we've got them all set up. So their plans in great, a great place here. So now we start getting into, all right, what else can we do? What's that next level of planning that we can do? And that's when tax alpha comes up. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drop in that scenario. You're going to notice that in here in this section, I've actually got everything untoggled because I want to talk to each one of these techniques one by one. So you can see, all right, John and Jane, let's talk about a Roth conversion. So you talk through them, what you're going to do, how this works, and then you toggle this on. So as soon as I toggle this on, a couple of things are going to happen. Yes, in those years after retirement, their assets actually do go down because they're paying that taxes, they're paying that higher tax liability than they necessarily had to. So we see that go down. But at the end of the plan, because we've saved all of those money in taxes and now we're growing all of that tax deferred and tax free, or tax free, we can see that we've gained about $10 million in our plan here. So pretty sizable chunk there. So if we wanna learn more and we wanna dive deeper into how we were able to do that, that's where you can now go in and we can go into this taxes section and this is where we've got one of the first newer charts that help you tell this story around Roth conversions and around tax alpha. So you can see that, yes, these clients actually are paying quite a sizable amount in taxes over the lifetime of their plan, as we can see here. But what we're actually showing them is that by doing this conversion, and you can see that with this total taxes, we're able to see an effective and how much they're paying in taxes. So we can see that they were really low in what they would be paying in taxes in this year. So that's why we're converting this. And we show them that by doing this, we're reducing their taxes by this amount here.
we're also increasing their total portfolio assets by this amount. And, you know, overall, their probability of success stays really high. So we're sticking at that 97% number. If I also want to dive deeper and they want to talk about necessarily how much and what that might actually look like, this is where we can get into the tax bracket section. And we can actually zoom in and see that, hey, this is where in those years that we're going to be converting, we're converting up to the ceiling of that 24% bracket here. So you can see we're converting all the way up to that green line, which is the ceiling of the 24%. Now, underneath this, if they want to start getting a little bit more and they're intrigued about how much they might actually be converting, if you actually scroll down here, you can actually see how much is being converted through that technique, what's the taxable portion of it, and then what's going into that marginal bracket. Now, one thing to note and one thing that I would say, and I get this question all the time, is like, hey, how exactly, how much number, how much money is it going to be exactly? This is where I would say this is great for strategy, and, but not tactical. So when you're looking at this, this is helping you really execute and see the impact of a strategy, but not necessarily tactically how to actually execute that strategy. So obviously with this, you still wanna go um, into, you still wanna go and talk to your you know, tax professional, whoever's doing that work, if that's you guys, if that's someone else, hey, still work with that to figure out exactly how much we are doing in that. All right, after you've sort of gone through that, then you're really starting to think about, all right, what other strategies can we do? So now we're gonna talk about a different one, saving and comparing traditional 401k strategies to a saving into that Roth 401k. So if I jump back over to my screen here and I'm, uh, I've got my other tab open, I'm back in the plans area. Let's actually talk about what if we switch our contributions into our 401k from traditional to Roth moving forward. So the first thing to note is that in this 401k, you do want to make sure that this is set to a standard type or type for Roth 401k. Now that's actually one change that we've made whenever you are setting this up. We actually have moved Roth 401k to be the default type of qualified account so that you can take advantage of that if they are over that bracket where any catch up contributions need to go into that. Yes, we are gonna be factoring that in there. But if you haven't done that, that's actually one of the best practices is to change that account type into that Roth 401k because you can still make the traditional contributions but if you do have to show those Roth contributions in that catch up in the future years, once they're over that certain threshold or that income threshold, you can do that as well. Now, the only thing that I actually did in this make changes to here in this John's 401k was I came into the contributions area and I switched my pre-tax contributions. I moved them out of here and I moved it all up here into this Roth contributions. So in this case, John Jane, John's contributing 15% of his salary. Now, the other thing that you can take advantage of here is that you can actually have employer match go in as Roth as well. So down here in this employer contributions, I've also scheduled that to be 100% Roth as well. So if we jump back over to our decision center, same thing, if we go back into our lifetime portfolio value, when we turn this on, we're again, we're gonna see another value here. So we're gonna see that number go up even further, the lifetime or the value gain over the lifetime. And if we drill in to those taxes again, same type of strategy. We do see that we're paying a little more in tax now, but we're paying less in tax later. So we can see that gray bar, which is the difference, the alpha that we're paying in here in taxes, we're seeing that continue to grow. And look at that, we're saving over four and a half million dollars and taxes as well. Hey, Chris. Yeah. Got a couple of questions here. Sure. Um, first is with regard to IRMAA, uh, is in the conversion strategy, is that surcharge being taken into account? Yeah, so no, we don't have IRMA built directly into this. Um, typically with some of these clients, we're actually seeing that we just, are, are, you're using that highest IRMA surcharge. So no, we're not seeing this built into this. And then, yeah, I'm seeing these other questions. 
Um, so does it take into account whether you have non-qualified money to pay the taxes? No, that's something that you have to sort of, you know, use looking at this. So yes, that could sometimes cause them to go over that tax bucket. So if you see they don't have any non-qualified money to pay taxes, they might need to take a little bit more out and go over that. So that's a great question. And uh, no, we don't have any break even charts or anything that shows here when it might happen and when they might actually save. So yeah, that is something that you would want to look at and start doing some of those break even calculations on your own. So great, great questions. Cool, thank you. Yeah. All right. So after now we're looking at this total taxes and we're looking at you know the the saving into the Roth for the Roth portion of the 401k we've got another you know smart saving technique we can execute here so if we go back over into our strategy here we're going to toggle on our switch to Roth 401k here we're going to toggle that on the other thing that we can do is we can think about investing our HSA rather than just spending it out so I've got two techniques here that I've used so again, I'm using that make changes to. So the first thing is I want to, instead of just switching this to no growth because money was going fully in and coming fully out, I'm gonna put in some growth characteristics on this. So I wanna grow it by our aggressive portfolio pre-retirement and then our growth portfolio in retirement. And then in this contributions and withdrawals, I wanna go in here and I wanna switch this use 100% of annual contribution from yes, to know. So essentially what this 100% of annual contribution is just saying that, hey, maybe this client knows that in this HSA, they know that they need all of the money that they're able to save into this HSA. They know they need to spend that every year on healthcare. So they just wanted to show that one simple step for you. You could say, yes, they're still getting the reduction in their above the line taxes on that. So they're still getting the reduction in income or gross income, but you know, they weren't getting any of that deferred growth and tax savings and that third tax saving by, you know, being able to fund expenses in the future tax free. So we're going to make sure that we have this change here. Now, the other thing that we've done here is that we actually already have an expense set up for health insurance between the age of 60 and 65 in this scenario. So what we can do here now is that when we're doing this, we can actually come in here and because we're now going to have money to fund this, we can go in here and we can put in this funding and we can say that, hey, here's this funding and we want to you know, pay and we want to dedicate funding to this. And that's going to be that health savings account that we have. So those are the two changes that we made for this technique here. And if we go back to our decision center, we can again toggle both of these two things on. And again, we could see what this looks like at the lifetime portfolio value at the top, what that might happen. But then really it's looking at our total taxes that really shows that, you know, yeah, hey, our cumulative taxes are continuing to go down and our total portfolio assets are gonna continue to go up here. All right, so the last strategy that I've got, you know, fully built out here is, you know, using that, qualified charitable distribution to, to pay this, or using a qualified charitable distribution and funding that directly with RMDs. So again, John and Jane, faithful donors to their local charity, they already have a charitable gift expense established in their base facts. So if I go in here and I go into my expenses, you can already see that we've got charitable giving established here. And we see that's with our other health insurance. But what we wanna do is that in this charitable giving, we don't have this funded with anything. So really we're just gonna take this and we're just gonna gift from cash flow. So how can we be a little bit more efficient? So that's where if we get back into our plans, that's where in this section, we've got two things that we're gonna do here. So the first thing that we're gonna do again is we're gonna use that make changes to, and we're gonna stop that charitable gift. So we're gonna stop that charitable gift. We're just gonna end it when John is 69. So the gifting now continues as normal or as expected like they are in their base facts from now until they reach that age 69 here. But 
What we're then going to do is that we're going to restart the charitable gifting and we're going to create a new strategy. We're going to call it, you know, charitable gifting with that QCD. What we're doing and we're going to continue that same amount of $10,000 annually. We're going to go by inflation, but we're going to do two things here. Because this is a QCD and we're going to be directly able to, you know, take this above the line, instead of setting this to charitable gift, which would go into your itemized deductions, we're going to use this as miscellaneous above the line deduction. So clicking in here, miscellaneous above the line deduction is what we want to set. We're going to start this when John is 70, continue to John's death. And then we're going to go into the funding tab. And here we're going to set and make sure that the 401k is the funding source. And I've clicked on too many things here. We're gonna make sure the 401k is the source. So sorry about that, I clicked on too many things. All right. So now that we've got that, the final thing that we're going to do is we're going to go into the plans area. We're going to go back to the decision center. We're going to drop in that tax mark strategies again, that tax mark strategies plan again. And we're going to toggle those final two things on. So we're going to toggle on that stop charitable giving at age 69 with the QCD at 70. And we can see that overall impact. Now, one thing that I forgot to show you is that, you know, by adding all of these, you're kind of seeing that cumulative happen. But if you were to just toggle any one of these on or off, you would still see the impact of just that individual technique here. So we could see the individual impact of all of these things being toggled on. The other thing that we can look at if we want to see a little bit more detail on this one is if we do go into the reports area, if we go into that income tax report, we can drill in and we can see these contributions so we can see these above the line deductions happening. All right. So how do you deliver this plan? So that's really where, you know, you sort of deliver it, sort of like I've been showing you. You start off with everything turned off. You start in a lifetime portfolio value, and then you have a conversation around this. You talk about each one of these different pieces, how it might work, when you want to show the impact of each one, maybe talking about what it does when you're looking at each one, toggling them on and off. And then maybe you end up when you're looking at something like this, we're looking at, you know, our, our taxes and we're looking at our total taxes. Hey, we've really created some tax alpha here. So great. We're all set. We're good to go. Now, the final thing that you can do is that you do have some other strategies that you can implement. So all of these techniques have meant that their Monte Carlo has gone up slightly. Their taxes are down by really almost a third. Their portfolio assets are up you know, 13 or $14 million. So all of these are tax smart strategies and tax alpha. So that's really, you know, the end of what I had built out for you. But the other things that you can do is, hey, what if you talk about locating to a new state that has lower tax, especially maybe one that has a beach? What does that look like? You can toggle that on and show them the difference happening there. What if maybe 529s offer some benefits that come with that tax deferred growth and you want to spend and contribute more into those 529s and see some you know, reductions in your income tax now, you can do all of that. Or maybe you've got more tax efficient managed accounts that show reduced turnover, you know, qualified dividends, capital gains, and all of those things. You've got a lot of other strategies that you can implement here. Now, the final thing that I do want to leave you with is as you're delivering and you're talking about all of these strategies and you maybe have something that you want to give to the client for them to review after the fact before you maybe execute something like this. We actually do have this new go to presentation where we can look at either our existing or build a new presentation. And we've actually got things and we've actually are allowing you to create new scenarios and new presentations using the stuff here with our decision center. So if we come in here and we look at the selected reports, we want to see reports, 
we can find that total taxes chart. And now we can add that total taxes report into this presentation. So going through and adding presentations and adding things in here, you know, we want to use that tax smart strategies and preview that. Now we can see that, hey, that chart that we just saw in the decision center, that's exactly what we're looking at here in our total taxes. So again, we've added some functionality that allows you to take everything that you may have wanted to build in the decision center, combine it with the things that you're showing to the clients in the reports area to create that more um, you know, tangible take home value for them with everything that you've you know, started and built. All right, so unfortunately, science tells us that you're likely to forget 90% of what I shared today. So here's the 10% that you need to retain. While market volatility has caused recent spikes in demand for planning, the current data reflects a longer term trend that investors are increasingly wanted more advice, and that advice is shifting from just investment picking to more holistic financial planning. In addition, the trend also mirrors clients increasing their willingness to pay for the advice they receive. If you've been struggling with this, then as an advisor or struggling to demonstrate the tangible value that clients can receive for the fees they pay, leaning into tax smart strategies might help you differentiate yourself from the pack. And the time is right to start the conversion on taxes. While the retirement and investments are top of mind, many investors are seeking help to navigate the minefield of taxes. Come that next level of advisor by leveraging your technology to deliver scalable advice and recommendations. And you've seen with a couple of clicks that were not only quick and easy to implement, but very strategic in manner, delivered tax alpha. We used the new Roth conversion transfer flow to fill up a tax bracket. We changed the type to Roth 401k to compare contrast to traditional to a Roth 401k. We showed the triple tax benefits offered by setting up a separate healthcare expense and using an HSA to fund that. And lastly, we showed how QCD can be modeled with a similar funded expense and we could set the taxation properly by showing an above the line deduction. Now, you've talked about these and a host of other tax strategies with your clients. Now move up to be a next level advisor and bring these strategies to life, connecting goals, taxes, in terms of holistic plan and engaging the tech platform. You can find more on the raw conversion techniques and other tax topics inside of the knowledge base, including videos, user guides, and other helpful how-tos to help you uh, with a step-by-step -step guide process through. So thank you, and we'll see if we have any questions. We've got a couple. Do you want to jump right in? You want to read them off? Yeah. Um, so I, I cannot do that first one. I cannot compare to Money Guide. You know, I, I've got a decent, you know, number. I've got a decent um, experience with that, but you know, no, I'm not not comfortable, you know, with with the differences in that one. But you know, an HSA funded expense, and then how do contributions differ or differ? So I think with the the HSA funded expense, that's really about the contributions show that first money going in. So you're getting the upfront tax savings. So you're not contributing, you're you know reducing your taxable income in that contribution year. Then by allowing that money to sit in there, you're getting that, you know, that tax deferred growth. So that non-taxable growth that you're going to be, you know, possibly using. And then by setting up that funded expense, the system knows that, hey, that's a healthcare expense. It knows that HSA is coming out. So then you're also getting that third tax saving by not actually spending any money. We're not taxing those contributions on that. So that's really that, that triple tax um, saving that you're getting with that HSA. Cool. Any other questions? Please drop those in the Q and A. Um, any final takeaways you want to share with us, Chris? Yeah, you know, when, as you're thinking about this, just you know, take advantage and start building it. I think that new total taxes chart, whether you are you know working on tax alpha or really just showing and saving. You know, strategies can can help you show the client the big impact of some of these um, contrib contributions. So, you know, as you're as you're building these strategies, taking advantage of that and then delivering it through a presentation can really help you show the the value of your your plans. Cool. 
Uh, one more question that did come in about that break even, if there's a way to quickly calculate that. Am I right that in the decision center, you can just look and see where the gray bars turn the green bars and that's your break even? Or am I thinking too simplistically about that? Yeah, uh, there, there's definitely a way that you can get in and 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 calculate when the break even might be for that. But, um, you know, no, I don't have any idea if there's a plan to add a break even feature, you know. If, if you are a current customer, you are a current subscriber, you know, please go into the requested feature and add that as a, a suggestion because that's a great idea on, you know, when does it make sense and what's the break even, you know, how long do the clients have to live to make that work? You know, with this plan, yeah, they were well exceeding that number. They were reducing that and they got a ton extra. So I'm sure there was a break even point at some point, even if they don't live out to H93 in there. But no, I'm not sure if any... Um, plans to add that in. Yeah, I'll say to you, just anyone who's an e-money user, uh, in my experience, when you call into support, the folks that you talk to really know what they're talking about. So if you wanted to run through one of those break-even calculations with them, I'm sure they'd be very helpful in doing that. So then you've got sort of a, um, you know, a playbook to do that again in the future, but good question. Yeah. And, you know, just to add to that, you know, it's it's not lip service to go in and, and add that suggestion. A lot of the features and functionality that you saw today that that I was able to create this presentation with and do were because of great suggestions by current users. So please do that. We absolutely are looking at them all the time and using your best examples and your best ideas to you know define and help us you know guide our roadmap to make the tool better for you. Chris, is there any place to see? like upvotes or what the most popular feature requests are, uh, or is it, or is that just something that is handled internally? Yeah, actually, if you go right into that, it's so we use something called user voice. If you go right into that request a feature functionality, you can see, you know, what's been most popular, what's been voted, what's in there. So yeah, it's, it's a place that you can see all of that. Okay. Very cool. Yeah, and just the suggestion that uh, maybe you, Chris, could take this back to the development team. I would guess that the best way to do that is for you to actually submit that yourself uh, so they can track to the user. And um, yeah, exactly. Uh, that's the appropriate venue for that. I have a good question. Cool. Anything else? Looks like that is all of our questions for now. I'll jump back on camera here. Cool. So I think, you know, you spoke to a couple of these things, but just kind of in summation, I think what jumps out to me is, I don't know if anyone caught the Kitz's article recently. It was a guest uh, article by a few different folks, but just talking about the tech trends and where financial advisor technology is going, kind of uh, financial planning 3.0. Um, it They spoke to the increasing regulatory complexity and just how difficult it is to stay on top of these changes for the average advisor and, and maybe some of you are solo advisors. So you're taking out the trash and, you know, paying rent on your space. If you've got a, a an office at, while you're trying to find clients and service them. And so staying on top of all this stuff is really, really difficult. Uh, it's becoming increasingly more complex and difficult. And so I think that just speaks to the the power of the cash flow engine of e-money, which, you know, in my, in my opinion, there are, there are other great ones out there. E-Money, I think really kind of stands out as the most powerful cash flow engine. So as they add some of these optimization tools, it makes it so that you, you know, you want to obviously be up on the new rules if you can to understand where some of the limitations are. So when asked about Irma, so that's, you know, good call out, good thing to know about, uh, but being able to quickly calculate these things, um, you know, based on current rules, I think E-Money has always done a great job updating the system for new tax um, tax code changes, things like that. So I think that's one part. And then, and then just to hit on another part, it's always difficult for us to demonstrate our value in financial terms. You know, you pay me 10,000 a year. What did I do for you? Uh, some of those things are not easily uh, quantifiable, but I think with the decision center, you can show that, Hey, by changing this strategy, by implementing this strategy, I saved you. I think it was, uh, I can't recall, it was over a million dollars in taxes, right. which is pretty powerful. Um, so just a, a cool thing to do. And sometimes a year in review, like what do we do this year uh, to help clients realize, you know, and just remember what what impact you had and what changes you made and what what that means for them, I think can be really good in terms of retention and referrals and things like that. Um, so yeah, just uh, as a reminder, again, XYPN members get 
Um, most folks are on the eMoney uh, Pro subscription, uh, which includes advanced planning, includes the decision center, um, uh, and, and obviously a number of other features. XYPM members get a 41-ish percent discount on uh, eMoney Pro, so it's a pretty substantial discount. Um, if you're not already an XYPN member, you can go to xyplannetwork.com and click talk to us to, to connect with a network navigator that's going to kind of help you understand what your ROI would be if you did join XYPN based on all the discounts and things that, that we provide, uh, free software that we provide. Uh, and that's that's the hard dollar ROI. There's also, you know, all of the included benefits, things like the community, uh, the education that may not uh, have a hard dollar cost uh, associated, but are are really important, especially if you're in sort of a smaller firm and need sort of more of that support network. Uh, and if you're a current member, just connect with your member experience specialist membership at xyplanetwork.com. If you have questions about this benefit, uh, e-money in general, anything about, uh, about e-money and how we partner with them, please don't hesitate to reach out. Chances are uh, Sarah Williams or I will, will answer that question for you. Um, so just in summary, we're going to send the recording. Uh, Chris, if you think the slides are relevant, we'd like to grab those from you too and, and send those out if that's okay. Um, and then there's also going to be a survey once we end this uh, Zoom, if you wouldn't mind filling that out, that gives us good feedback as to what you thought about this presentation, how we can change it, improve, and continue to bring cool um, cool content to you that's that's relevant and helpful. All right. Anything else, Chris, before we jump off? No, thank you for, for having me. Likewise. Thank you so much, Chris. And thanks everyone for joining us. Have a nice day.